Amid the busy background of everyday life, we see them on sidewalks and street corners, their makeshift shelters and shopping carts. People living out shadowy lives in plain sight, as life for the rest of us goes on all around them. It is a frustrating, complicated presence with no easy answers, but one that people you'll meet are determined to solve, one hard victory at a time. I'm Vicki Gonzalez. Over several months, photojournalist Marcelino Navarro and I followed along with a special team to abandon buildings, vacant land, streets, and sidewalks. Tonight, those struggling on the streets and those seeking solutions. Each of them with their own stories to share. We're starting off in February, 11 months ago. I worked patrol for about four and a half years. I was a field training officer out here, and I had a, a lot of experience um, with homeless individuals because we had so many calls for service just on the patrol end. It's very different than patrol, whereas patrol, a lot of times, you know, you go to a call and you have to find kind of a quick solution, you know, and then you're, right after you're done with that call, you're on to the next one and things like that. Whereas with this one, we can take the time and we can do more of the long-term solutions to these problems. It's a lot more gratifying. Deputy Matt Hovermail is one of seven members of the Sacramento County Homeless Outreach Team. That is seven deputies for the entire county of Sacramento. And county of Sacramento, that's over 900 square miles. The goal of the HOT team is not to criminalize those experiencing homelessness, but to connect them to services and housing. Yeah, it's definitely not like one thing that's causing all this. It's multifaceted. It's, you know, mental illness, the drug use, there's the lack of, you know, shelter and housing. All while balancing complaints from residents and business owners. But you're not interested in housing? The reason why I'm not interested in housing. Uh... Our first stop, Marconi and Fulton. So if housing's not for you, then you need to make this work for you. And that means not having so much stuff with you. David has been on the streets for more than a year, staying at the Sacramento Public Library in Arden for a couple weeks. They told me to pack up and leave. How do you feel about that? It's understandable. What would you like people to know about, you know, just your situation and about what's happening? Um, uh, not really, I just uh, hope they don't get in this situation themselves. You know, and that's about all. Just across the street, the hot team speaks with a woman taking shelter along a power box. We, we've given her resources and phone numbers. Um, I've, I've tried to give her, you know, many, many times, you know, this is how you need to start improving your situation. And that's exactly how I see her every time. You need to stop worrying about other people and start taking care of yourself. Because you can't take care of anybody else until you, you get yourself situated, right? She was issued a notice of trespass, which is a warning, but it can escalate into a citation or arrest if she remains at the location. Huh? I'm just scared to do you by by myself. Well, what, are you scared, what are you scared of? To do you by myself. Okay, well, you know, you, I mean, you have to take care of yourself, okay? I know it's scary, I know, but you got to look at it like, hey, I'm making progress, you know, you're, you're making that phone call, like we said, that's what you're going to do, right? To make that phone call, those numbers I gave you, okay? In addition to what I'm going to do on my end, and we're going to start trying to get some progress here, okay? But you have to do that, okay? Yes, it's scary at first to make that jump, but once you make that jump, good things can happen, okay? But at some point, you know, we can only give out so many resources, give them so many chances, then we start to take in that enforcement action. Um, otherwise, they'll, they'll stay here, just like this. Deputy Hovermail knows both David and the woman on a first name basis. So David over there, who has the orange shirt over by the Taco Bell, yes. um, he's someone that we've been constantly just talking to. Um, he is not interested in housing. Um, he says it's too much like you know, jail or prison or something like that. One of the things we do and one of the things we really stress is to get out there and recontact these people over and over again, um, gain that rapport and that trust with them. And then maybe someday they'll eventually, you know, hopefully take some of the resources I'm offering them or um, accept some of the advice that I'm giving them. Our 
next stop off Morse and Arden. Uh, this individual that we're going to go see right now, um, she's been offered housing. She was actually offered um, housing actually not too long ago, but declined it. You're still downsizing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, we're still getting complaints, you know. Um, it wasn't as right after we kind of downsized or you gave up a lot of that stuff and all that. It wasn't as bad, uh, but now the complaints are coming back in. How long have you been in this area? Uh, quite some time now. Five, six, six, five years. Even though she can't talk, she's my best friend. We talked about it yesterday that that medical issue is going to is going to get a lot worse if yeah. you don't take care of it. The hot team is connecting Marshalla with Elka Health Center, which offers free medical services. So what's Netflix. your long-term plan after you get Elka to check you out? <laughs> Find a shelter that me and her can go to and get in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you are down with the shelter and if it accepts dogs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm done with this already. Yeah. Okay. I'm well, we've, we've talked about this for, for a while with you, just yeah. you know, trying to get you in a, in a position where, yeah. where, where you, you, can, you can go into someplace I'm medically. Do you think that they're trying to help you? Yeah, they actually care. They do. Today, she actually did say for the first time that she's willing to accept housing if we're able to find it, which is awesome. But, you know, once I get them on and that, that starts rolling, I can't have you back out again. A lot of the success we have is from that rapport building. Um, they gain the trust, they know us by name, um, and just through those constant contacts that we have with them. The majority of people the hot team come in contact with have been experiencing homelessness for years. What I've found in my experience is that those people that have, you know, ended up on the streets because they've been evicted or because of some type of, you know, financial hardship or traumatic event or whatever, a lot of times they're very much willing to work to get back to where they were. Deputy Hovermail explains the challenges often involve deep-rooted issues. Okay. I'd say a majority of them fall into either a mental health or a drug-related um, category. Um, a lot of times they're using the drugs to self-medicate for a mental illness. Uh, we find that quite a bit. If you get people, I think, off the drugs, if we get people the mental health treatment that they need, I think they might be more willing or more capable mm -hmm. of accepting the uh, accepting the shelters and the, yeah. you know kind of working toward that the last stop of the day a heavy dangerous lift 1420 Howe Avenue we're putting mask on because uh, just the hazards in this building um, asbestos feces uh, just dirt construction materials um, black mold a massive abandoned business complex, transforming into a regular spot for squatters, but now being demolished. Every board you see has been a point of entry uh, that they've been using to get inside the building at the camp. Any idea how many people were living here? It's a big, it's, it's a big building. It's a big building. Um, I believe the n biggest number we've ever pulled out is around, it's in the teens, maybe 20. Um, and that was just, you know, at one point. Usually there's always at least a few people inside, though. For the past weeks, the hot team has been making sure no one is inside and clearing out whomever remains before the complex is leveled. So, you know, building being demolished. You know, we have the date that they should be gone. Despite notices to vacate, people are still inside, hiding in squalor. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because I've been here so often. Um, but the first time I came in, absolutely. Yeah, because it's just, you don't see stuff like this. From used needles to people setting indoor fires, human waste, not to mention toxic building materials. The hazards are everywhere. And even going through the building, this is kind of like a maze and just protecting mm -hmm. yourselves when you're when you're responding to this or getting people to vacate. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just a lot of different doors and a lot of different yep. rooms. <laughs> Which is why when we're doing this building in particular, we always make sure we have like the full team with us. Um, for that extra safety. One moment the hot team is weaving through dark abandoned sections. And the next, a young woman is found in a seeming hiding place, turning a small section into a makeshift bedroom. Room where they've been uh, hanging out and living. And you can see when you go in, they have like a little full little furnished apartment. They got their bed, you know, 
dresser, you got a little table, chairs, stuff on the walls, air freshener. All around are indications that dozens of people have been filtering in and out for the better part of a year. It's a big project. It's a lot of work. Um, it's been a lot of work. So to know that it's being demolished tomorrow and it's finally going to be, you know, kind of off our plate, um, it feels good to know that it's finally going to be done and over with. Do you feel discouraged after these types of calls? I don't know if discouraged is the right word, um, but I know that there's more work to do. It's now six months later with the coronavirus pandemic spreading. Where's her tent? There are new precautions in place and new efforts to protect people living on the streets. Oh, there she is. Sergeant Christy Lynn is leading the hot team through unprecedented times, but the faces, they're familiar. How are you doing today? I'm tired. Yeah? You're not sleeping well? Marshala is still sleeping in the same spot we met her at six months ago. If we did a cleanup of this area, would you be able to, would you be willing to like move for a day so that we can get in here yeah. and do some like serious cleaning? Yeah. Okay. I got your word on that? Yeah. Okay, because we'd have to set, it, we'd have to set it up mm -hmm. to get what we would need to clean. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to get everybody up and, the, and then, yeah, you no. know, okay. Actually, a lot of this stuff I want, I don't want any. You want to get rid of it? Yeah. So. Okay. And you're still not interested in, in going to the the hotels okay all right well we, we want to check i know i know you've said it hey that's good all right this is good stuff we'll keep moving forward all right all right gotta be good neighbors to everybody around here so twice we've gotten her approved for housing and at the, at the last minute she's just decided it's not really for her do you want to stay out here or do you want to find housing i don't want to stay out here no more uh What's preventing you from finding housing? Because they're trying to connect you with services. Um, huh. It's kind of hard to say. Um, a bunch of different things, honestly. Just got too comfortable, I guess you could say, out here. But, yeah, I just, I guess I'm being stubborn and selfish at the same time. What is your concern level when it comes to COVID and the risk of getting sick? Honestly, <laughs> it's kind of hard because of a question because um, me personally, I'm already, my health has already gone to hell. It's already shot. So as far as COVID and getting, you know, the possibility of it actually catching it, bring it. Because you know what? 
I'm already out here, so you can't stop it if it does. How did the conversation go out there? Oh, good. We have a good relationship with her. You know, we kind of know what she's willing to do and what she's not, but we always ask anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so she has a tendency to think of, you know, what what's tomorrow going to look like if I go to a hotel? Not long term. And we're trying to get her to think more long term. In response to COVID-19, the state created Project Room Key, which provides free housing for high-risk individuals experiencing homelessness. We're always hopeful for the ones that, that have taken advantage of Project Room Key. We've housed some out of state that wanted to go back to their families during this. So, you know, so there's been some really good things that have come out of it. I think if you want to look at it that way, you know, maybe we're in this pandemic, but we've been able to house some people. Because of COVID-19, the HOT team is limited as to how they can respond to people sleeping in public areas. What have been the biggest changes to your job and to the team's job with COVID? Probably the inability to, to move people from areas like that to do cleaning and the types of complaints that are coming in that it's getting a lot worse because we can't get in there and do cleaning. One example is our next stop along Alta Arden Expressway. I just cleaned all the stuff and back it up. Awesome. Um, I come to help them out. Okay. Devin has been staying here for the time being. Wear your mask. I see your mask on the ground. It's not doing you any good there. And his friend Brandon is stopping by. Do you like Deputy Biddle? Yeah, he's he like a father figure, you know. Devin knows the hot team pretty well. If we're going to speak about these guys in general and their group of people that help us, yes. Uh, honestly, they've been the best officers that I've actually ever come in contact with. There's other, I'm not going to say, you know, there's other law enforcement that automatically assume certain things, and it feels pretty good they didn't judge us, you know, and Absolutely. I like, you know, it was cool. And they've been really, really kind, and they've been really patient with me. But while the hot team is speaking with Devin and Brandon... Yes, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're okay. I reside here. Okay. A neighbor stopped Sergeant Lynn to share concerns about the encampment. This crew right here, they got to go, man. Can I, can I explain to you? Yes, um, so, so they got the crew. <laughs> because it's public. I'm sorry. No, no I'm, I'm fine. Out. I'm fine. Man, I'm fine. Okay. Because it's public property, we're not allowed to move them. Just the sheets and in... the tarps, and it's unsightly and unsanitary. It is and garbage. Yeah. Yeah. The garbage. An example of striking a trying balance. She's a, the exact email we get of laying it out. This is where we are. This, are. this is what's happening to the neighborhood that we think it's related to this. But before we leave, yet another person stops the hot team. However, this time it's someone they've helped get off the streets. Um, I just came out here to check on some friends. Um, I was down here at one time and I know what it's like, but I know what these people, these, these guys have done and, and, and it's incredible. It gives, you know, people that are on the streets and that are feeling, you know, like there's going to be nothing that's going to happen good for them. Um, these people care. They really do, you know. And they helped you. Yeah, Officer uh, Officer Biddle did quite a, quite a bit, yeah. Um, with his, uh, his um, you know, being stern but being but being nice, you know what I mean? Being nice about it. So, yeah, no, he, he in fact, he, he loosened me up to the authorities because at, at one point in time, I was really afraid of them, you know what I mean? And I didn't want to be around them for my history, um, kind of went for a little bit and then I'm trying to get myself back together. Awesome. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let Biddle know that I, thank you very much. Oh, I will. In this situation, Y'all are juggling a lot, like in yeah. terms of talking to people that, that are living here um, on the street, but then also having yeah. drivers pull up and be like... Multitasking. Yes. <laughs> and I think that kind of touches upon, you know, the challenge of finding the right balance. For sure. And uh, But the complaint we're hearing right now is that there's no balance. It's one-sided on all the rights and protections of homeless and the business owners and the residents are not getting the same type of response or respect with their concerns. But the COVID-19 public health order still allows the HOT team to remove people off private property. How many individuals live here? Oh, I don't know. It, it depends. 10, 15, depends on who's rolling through. Hello? Anybody home? leading to our last stop in Antelope. We'll post them and give them notice that we'll be out within 72 hours to do the final cleaning. 
we want to make sure that we've offered services to everybody and that everybody's had an ample opportunity to know what's going to happen. Um, but we, you know, we know these people. We see them out here every week, so everybody knows. Spanning a few football fields where encampments have taken residence and drug use an issue. Used needles. These are all used needles. Yeah, there's one right behind you that's totally full. We find them all over the place out here. Well, if we bring some more bags out here and you guys start piling it up in a pile, we can bring Work Project out here next week. We've hit the area multiple times with uh, offering services. Um, we've gotten a couple of them housed just in the past month. Um, so we're working on it. Could your team be bigger? Oh, always. <laughs> we were bigger last year. We did get cut last year. We used to have five, uh, 10 officers on the street. Now we have seven. Um, but man, we, we could always be bigger. Anybody else over there? No? What do we lose <laughs> oh, if this didn't exist? I mean, I just think there's so many benefits to even just the relationships we form with the homeless. You know, we celebrate when there's somebody that someone's been working with for a long time and they finally get them housed or they finally get them connected to services or, you know, moved back with their family across the country or whatever it is, even the little things. But there's disappointments too. Some of them that we've seen come back out is really disappointing, heartbreaking, when you see that they could potentially have started kind of a new chapter and gone a different direction. I really want to try to come out here and get people the help that they need even if they don't know they need it. And sometimes just a conversation can really change the day and their mood. And I love that. We first met up with the sheriff's homeless outreach team nearly a year ago, followed them from campsite to campsite as they reached out and worked one on one with those living on the streets in abandoned buildings and open fields to help them find better lives. Have a good one, all right? Thank you. A week before Christmas, we caught up with them again. Okay. This time, spreading a bit of holiday cheer. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Dog food for the pup? Yeah. Today we're handing out uh, holiday gift bags to all the homeless in the area. Um, we have over 150 holiday gift bags. Over the past year, David has cooperated and engaged with the hot team, but still declines assistance. And that vacant office complex, Long Howe Avenue, we took you inside of, completely demolished. No longer a home for squatters and drug users. Hey, as for Marshala, we're out here giving out the holiday bags. Okay. Oh, nice. A month or two ago, she actually accepted housing for the first time. 
Inside we got a whole bunch of like snacks, drinks. Uh, there's like a new like knit cap for you. Okay, okay so yeah. try and keep warm. But for reasons not entirely clear, it didn't work out. It's my understanding that she decided to leave on her own and has come back to her old spot. What happened the last time? What went wrong, do you think? Because they didn't listen to me when I told them I needed certain things for my medical condition and they kicked me out because they're stupid. How does that make you feel? It is frustrating, um, for sure. But at the same time, I've been working with Marsala for a number of years, trying to get her into housing, and this is the first time she's actually taken that step. The fact that she took the step and went into housing and actually gave it a shot is a huge. Like, that, that's a huge accomplishment for her. But Marshalla is also in deep mourning. How have things been going? I've been depressed, so I've been staying in my tent. Her beloved companion, Sassy, passed away. There is no replacing her. I can't replace her, even if I tried. Because she's not, she's not one to replace. She's one of a kind. I think you feel a little defeated right now, understandably. A little, a lot. A lot. For Marshala, David, and the dozens, hundreds of people the hot team regularly reaches out to, the threads of hope are few and far between. Because the reality is there are many reasons why people end up on the streets living like this. What's his name? Oliver. Hi, Oliver. There's some more for him, all right? To offer each one of them an alternative, a solution, you need to build a relationship and understand them as individuals. Deputy Hovermail was talking about maybe considering housing. What are your thoughts on that? I'll try it one more time. I'm hoping that this little step will keep moving forward and she'll try housing again and hopefully we'll get her in there and she'll stick with it. It's that firm, compassionate tenacity that gives the hot team purpose. All right, guys, Merry Christmas. Hope and a reason to be back on the streets doing what they do each day. We're not giving up. All right, take care. Happy holidays. Thank you. I'm Vicki Gonzalez.